You should use your ability to write code to solve problems in your everyday life. I used my JavaScript knowledge to hack the like system on a hash node with just basic JavaScript. Let's check it out. What's up everyone. My name is James Q quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And I've been doing a lot just focused on basic features of JavaScript. And I figured as I was reading articles on hashnode.com, why don't I write a little script that can go and do all these different like buttons for me? I'll show you that in a second. Now I want to be clear. I did not find a vulnerability in hashnode. I just wrote a script to be able to accomplish a goal that I wanted to with just super basic JavaScript. So let's switch over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's start on the Hashnode homepage. This is Hashnode.com. It's an amazing platform for you to get started or continue writing articles and is really focused around tech content. It's one of my favorite online platforms for writing blogs and they're amazing in the community. I'm a huge fan of Hashnode. And so what happens is if you come to one of these articles and I'm, I'm just kind of choosing these at random, um, under this random one, this has all these different like buttons. There's 10 different ones. And I realized as I want to support content creators, I like, I comment, you should like and comment. I follow, I do all these things to show my support for other creators as a creator myself. And I realized I don't want to click each individual button. Why don't I just write code to do this? So I'll show you how we do that in a second. The other thing we need to know is if all of these icons have not been clicked. Notice there's only seven here. If all of them haven't been clicked, you have to hit this smiley face icon to then open them all up and then click them. So that'll uh, that'll take a little bit of info. We'll need to know that when we write our code is the point. So let me go ahead and look at this button, uh, this toggle button, and we can select this toggle button by the ARIA label toggle reaction modal. All right, and if we do that, then we get this pop-up with these other buttons that are right here. And these are using a where data reaction dash name. So data reaction name, that is a custom property, the data property and an HTML tag, and you can kind of assign it to whatever you want. And so this is the text for each one of these buttons. It's love it. And it's let's see this one. It is here's my like. And so that's dat data reaction name when these things are open. But if they're already here, they're slightly different, which is a little annoying. So if they're here, now we have aria label, but it's the same text. And we'll show you, show you how we're gonna use that in a second. So our idea is if all of these aren't clicked, we wanna click this smiley face button, then click all these. Otherwise, if they're already showing, we don't have a toggle button, so we'll go ahead and click them right here. Got it? Yes, cool. All right, so I'm in VS Code. This is a, a Quokka uh, JavaScript file, Scratchpad. It's a great extension for just writing out JavaScript. It's not super important here. The main thing is that I'm just using it to type in a little bit of JavaScript. So I get like IntelliSense and stuff and then take it over to copy it into the console. So I'm gonna start with pasting in an array. So here's all those buttons, so all those 10 buttons. Here's the different text that represents them. And then the first thing I wanna do is get the toggle button. So this toggle button comes from document query selector. And then now we need to pass in this query selector. And this is from aria label and it's toggle reaction modal. All right, so we'll go ahead and look for that toggle button. But remember that toggle button may not be there. The, it may not exist. If all those things are clicked, it may not be there. So let's first check if there is not a toggle button. Well, what do we do? Well, if there's not a toggle button, then we want to select the ones that are already out here and click each one, okay? So how do we get those? Well, we use this text up here, this array. So we wanna iterate through each one of these texts. So we'll say buttons dot for each, get a reference to each button. And then we want to query that element almost exactly like we did here and then click it. So we can do document dot query, query selector. And then now we need to pass in our fancy query selector. So if the toggle button is closed, then the buttons that are there, that are already there, if the toggle button doesn't exist, sorry, then the buttons that we're wanting to click on are using the aria label property. So we'll do aria label equals open close quotes. And then inside of these quotes, we want to use that button text. All right. So this will select that element. But then the last thing we want to do is actually click it. So we can just add on here after we selected it, let's just call the click function. Did you know you could just call click like that? And then the opposite of this is if that's not the case, if 
If there is a toggle button, we want to take the toggle button and click it. That will open up these icons for us to click on. And then we can just copy and paste this little iteration. But instead of ARIA label, now this is going to be data reaction name. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go through this one more time. We've got the text for each one of the buttons. We try to get the toggle button. If there's not a toggle button, we just click the buttons that are already there. So we'll do this with the ARIA label and then the button property, and then we click it. If there is a toggle button, we click the toggle button to open the icons, and then we click those icons using the data reaction name property. Then what we can do, this is not the best way to do this necessarily, but we can just take the script and paste it into our console. So we open up the console here. Notice the numbers 4, 5, 7, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 20. If I paste in the script, if it works, fingers crossed, this should now click each one of these. So notice each one of those got clicked. That's working. Cool. And then also for the flip side of this is if we run this script, I'm having some weird errors in here, but we run this script, sorry, run this script in here. Now it's going to toggle the thing open first and then go ahead and click those buttons. Looks like I might've missed one. Maybe I typed in that wrong, but it got all the rest of them. Did I miss that on this one too? Where it looks like it got the rocket anyway, but Moral of the story is able to write a little script here to save myself some time as a developer and get some practice with some basic JavaScript fundamentals, things like arrays, things like query selector, uh, if conditions, a for each function with arrays, querying by different properties like area label, and then custom properties like data reaction name. Anyway, I thought this was kind of cool. I figured you might enjoy it. Hopefully you did. If you'd like to see more kind of Here's how I write a script to hack some things with basic JavaScript. Let me know in the comments below what sort of things you might want to see. Lastly, I am working on a JavaScript challenges course at jschallenges.com. The domain there or the website there is very minimal. Keep that in mind. But what this is going to be is a mini series of solving problems using JavaScript. Maybe something like this you'll see in there. So you can check that out at jschallenges.com or more importantly, you can subscribe for the newsletter to get updates about it at jamesqquick.com newsletter. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.